friends. It's Wednesday and I'm Wanda Holt and I'm here to share my passion for friends, faith, fashion, and food with you. Today I'm so excited for you to meet my friend and entrepreneur extraordinaire Debbie Trombley. Hello Debbie. Hey, and Wanda. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Uh, Debbie and I got to know each other through the Chamber of Commerce and our work with them, but our friendship has gone way past the Chamber and way past our yeah. business connection. Uh, like myself, Debbie is a native Nashvilleian, which is really rare these days. Very. You don't find too many of us. Well, one day on social media, you posted a picture of your mom mm -hmm. that was taken in the 1940s in the Nashville Arcade. And I was just shocked because mm -hmm. I had an almost identical picture of my mm -hmm. mom taken at the same photographer, the same place, the same pose. It was it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And so since then, we have laughed about that and and we fantasized that maybe our moms knew each other maybe. and maybe they were friends like mm -hmm. we're friends. Yep. And so anytime anybody asks us uh how we met or uh, something unusual about ourselves, we'll say that our moms were friends, although we have no yeah. idea that they were, Or, but it's fun to think about. Well, we and know they walk in the same streets of Nashville. That's true. Mm -hmm. And they both love the Lord, and, yes. so, and so it's just fun to think about. Mm -hmm. Well, Debbie uh, is an It Works Global Double Diamond Consultant. And I'm privileged to be one of your loyal customers oh, and use your products. Uh, Debbie is also the queen of Facebook Live. <laughs> if you know Debbie, you've seen her on Facebook. Uh, she's there almost every day. Mm -hmm. And some days she's promoting her products, but every day you're encouraging other people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about it. I don't get to watch them all or catch them all, but the days that I do, uh, it's an inspiration to me and I know to other people. Debbie, can people connect with you on Facebook and how would uh, they do that? Uh, it's really simple. Um, I use my personal page for everything. So just go find me. It's Debbie Trombley. Think of a trombone if you want to know how to spell it. T-R-O-M-B-L-E-Y. Um, and send me a friend request and then you'll see all my lives. That's great. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage you to do that. Connect with Debbie, and then she can be your friend, too. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. Debbie, um, a week or so ago, you posted a video that was very fascinating to me because it was all about being obnoxiously optimistic. <laughs> and, you know, so many people live in a constant state of dread, mm -hmm. they have low self-esteem, uh, they're always broken mm -hmm. in one way or another. And so to have somebody say they're obnoxiously mm -hmm. optimistic is quite unusual. So tell me how you came up with that and what that means to you. Well, um, another organization that I'm active in is the Tennessee Christian Chamber of Commerce. So I was at a monthly luncheon and the gentleman in the buffet line beside me, um, who looks like Santa Claus, because he is Santa Claus every year, uh, he asked me how my day was. And I said, I have no complaints. And if I did, nobody would probably want to hear them. And he said, you know, my son um, accuses me all the time of being obnoxiously optimistic. And I looked at him and I said, now you know I've got to steal that because... I, I get up every day just full of life, ready to embrace the day, and I always tell the Lord, I know whatever comes my way, you've equipped me for that, right. and so I just uh, receive it all with uh, optimism. You know, I'm just not a negative person. So um, I knew right then and there that that was my next Facebook Live, because who would want a shot of double O, right? Uh, uh, obnoxiously optimistic. We hear negative Nellie, negative Nancy, mm -hmm. negative Ned, 
So let's just reverse that and let's all be obnoxiously optimistic. Wouldn't it be an amazing world if everyone took that sort of philosophy in mm. life to look at everything in a positive way? Even in, you know, a lot of bad things happen to mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. but if they looked at it in a positive frame of mind for the, for the future mm -hmm. anyway, um, it would be amazing what would happen and what yes. the world would be like. I just heard a sermon um, a couple weeks ago, and it was about the pain and our suffering, that there's a reason for that and that there is a purpose in our pain. Mm -hmm. And so you just got to receive it with that optimism and know um, that God's got this. That God's got this. We're not exempt from it because he wasn't. Right, exactly. Which is a good tie-in to the title of my book, <laughs> uh, Broken, Finding Purpose from Brokenness. So um, that's it's, what it's all about, is, is finding that purpose that God's given you and, and being optimistic through those trials mm -hmm. and things. That's great. It, good stuff. <laughs> well, today is Valentine's Day, and so we just have to talk about the loves of our lives. Um, I have been blessed to be married for 46 years to my wonderful Jerry. Yay. <laughs> and I know that you and Charlie have a unique love story. Will you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, goodness. Well, if he were here, he would say, be sure and tell the short version. So, I will. <laughs> um, we met in 1968 when I was a teenager. He was in the Air Force. And I always interject here, please don't worry. I was always mature for my age. He's always been immature for his. So, <laughs> the age difference was okay. <laughs> um, but we met. We were first true loves. And we were going to get married when I turned 18. But he's from Buffalo, New York. And he got out of the Air Force, went back home and literally got cold feet. Of course, in Buffalo, that makes sense, right? It does. Um, and so we did not get married when I turned 18. And um, he did marry someone. They had two children. And when the children were five and eight, he became a single dad. And um, that was like 10 years after we were supposed to get married. He reached out to me. We talked. His timing really was not good because <laughs> though he was still my first true love, um, I was a little scared. I was 28 at the time. And here was this uh, a man with these two little children that needed a mom, and quite honestly, it just scared me. So I told him, thanks, but no thanks. And that was in 1979. And then in 1991, he wow. called me uh, as his youngest, his daughter, was a senior in high school and was going to be going to college. So we talked for three months on the telephone, mm -hmm. and we decided that he needed to come see me. And it was just kind of like, you know, I never saw the Grand Ole Opry, so if I come, will you take me to see the Grand Ole Opry? And um, that was the pretense of him coming. And we set the date for him to come, and I almost called him the day before to tell him, Wow, don't come. You can't go back. And by this time, I'm about to turn 40. I had never married. Uh, he was 45, and his children were 18 and 21. So he came to see me, and five days later, we set the date to get married. Wow. That September, 1992. So we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary this Aww. past September. And I love to tell everybody that inside my wedding band, it's engraved back where I belong. And in his wedding band, it's engraved finally and forever. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. So. If you have a love story that beats Debbie's, then that's, <laughs> that's amazing. I that love is our story. incredible, incredible and so story. My, you know, I never gave birth to children, but uh, my son and my daughter, they were 18 and 21. When they came into my life, they stood up for us at our wedding. Today, our son lives next door to us, and our daughter mm. lives about three miles away. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I know. So blessed. And Charlie is an incredible person, loves the Lord, mm. actively involved in your church, I know, yes. with kids there. and. It's just Everybody it's loves awesome. Mr. Charlie. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We love that. I hope that made your Valentine's Day because <laughs> it kind of did mine too. Although I have a, you know, a love oh. story of my own, but mm -hmm. that's, that's really incredible. I love that. Well, Valentine's Day to me is also, it's not 
so much about the romantic love mm -hmm. as it, it's also about just God's love and loving yeah. each other and other people in general. So I hope today that you're also sharing God's love uh, with each other. Mm -hmm. And I love you and appreciate having you in my life as well. Uh, we share a lot of passions, mm -hmm. I know, and one of those is fashion. Mm -hmm. And you have a very distinctive style. So tell us about your, your personal style, how you put all that together. Well, um, it's interesting because one of my styles, before I tell you about this, and Wanda will smile when I say this, is a goodwill style. <laughs> I've been there too. <laughs> yeah, we, we did a fashion show together with the yes. chamber, and it was uh, um, impress, dress to impress. And the outfits had to be a certain amount of money, and Wanda did extremely well. So proud of you. <laughs> Um, but my dress today, you know, I spent 29 years in corporate America, so I, you know, had to wear the power suits and the, yeah, the little the little tie. Uh, yes, you know, the lace mm -hmm. and and uh, back in our day, the pants suits when they yes, you know, that's what absolutely. they called them. And loved that. Uh, but then I got introduced to direct sales, and with the company I'm with now, with It Works, our colors are black and green. But we also decided to add bling into the <laughs> color wheel. So black, green, and bling, you can see my colors here. My glasses are black and green. It's just become a very fun thing to wear. Um, everywhere I go, people comment on my black and green. So I've pretty much have branded myself and my colors. Um, red used to be my favorite color. I still love it, but uh, uh, this is my business now. You know, I get to wear my black and green everywhere I go. Um, and it's just, it's a conversation starter too. And I love to talk to people. I, I know that these shirts with uh, letters on it, words on mm -hmm. it, is, is a very popular style, a trend right mm -hmm. now. So what does your shirt say? You can't see the whole thing, but it says, Passion is my best accessory. Of course. Mm -hmm. And that's so true. It's very true of you. It and is, you, you carry it very well. Thanks. And you've done some modeling, too. So, I mean, this is not... <laughs> Fashion is not just something that you throw together. I mean, you you well and, you've been out there. Well, and you know, I think that one and I, you and I, you and I are such good examples that you don't have to be really tall and and thank real, goodness and real thin, right? Thank goodness, because yes. we are two short uh, folks uh, and very and we walk very tall though, <laughs> don't we? We try, yeah. But yeah, so um, I think um, just being able to express ourselves like the shirt you've got on, this little jacket. When I walked in today, I was like, I love that. Now, obviously, I won't wear it because it's not black and green. Of course. But I thought, where did she find that? So after this is over, you're going to have to tell me. Mm. <laughs> See? And and I did this uh, for Valentine's Day. So it's, oh, I love it. And it's hard for me to wear pink. Uh, like a Pepto-Bismol pink is mm -hmm. not good with my coloring. But I can wear like a bright pink like mm -hmm. this. I usually always get compliments when I wear a bright pink. Yes. Or a real like an icy pink. I can also wear that too. That's I a, think that's a winter I think that's kind a, of. Mm -hmm, a fa that's a passion pink. Oh yeah, passion pink. So that's sort of our <laughs> our our term passion. for today is passion. Well, thank you so much for being with me here today, Debbie. It's oh, just gosh, been such you. a treat. And I, I've loved it so much. So don't forget to connect with Debbie. Mm -hmm. You can watch her Facebook Live, um, her past Facebook Live <laughs> episodes, and also find out more about It Works if you like. Uh, I know you're getting into keto, which is something mm -hmm. that I've been uh, interested in lately. So that's really good. Um, and if you know someone who is struggling with maybe a low self-esteem, uh, maybe someone who who is pessimistic instead of optimistic, then you might share some of the resources that are available on my YouTube channel or also on my Facebook page. Obviously, my book might be a good resource for them mm -hmm. as well. So feel free to share that. Uh, I'm excited about next week. I have another friend who's going to be with me uh, on Wednesday with Wanda. I'm going to have uh, my good friend, Donna Pierce, who is a beloved friend of all. She is also a former pastor's wife and elementary school teacher. 
and a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. So you're going to love getting to know Donna Pierce a little better next week. So you don't want to miss uh, Wednesday with Wanda next week. So thank you for being here and watching. Leave me a comment below. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends if you're so inclined. And so until next week, 